How is everybody? Great. Good, right? Good morning. How are you? Oh, I'm okay. That was I was uh, a very heavy, um, surreal experience, and I I didn't get to do pleasantries or formalities or anything. I was just locked into this bus, and then I was committed to I'm not going to put these sweatpants on. They wanted me to wear sweatpants to go run to the elevator. And then, of course, I put the sweatpants on. and just I never saw anyone. I never got to see the crowd. I never got to see any of the boys. I never knew any of these talents I knew, talents I didn't know. And then the thing went up, and I got to see you know over 60,000 people or whatever it was. And it's just, uh, I'm still, uh, still reeling. I have a nine-month-old who did not make it to the match, which is okay. But she definitely stayed up throughout the night. So uh, uh, I'm sure there's plenty of parents in here who understand. So yeah, I, uh, yeah, this is a nice uh, to get out here and chat with you, all of you. I'm ready to rock. Okay, well, uh, Joel and I will take the questions for Adrian if you have one. Joel, uh, yes. Yeah. Alex from Talksport, Cody. Nice to have you back, brother. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask, because I, I read some of the interviews you did mm-hmm. uh, on the way in with Variety and Ringer and stuff, and I know you've spoken to Vince and different people like that. Have you spoken to Triple H yet? Curious after everyone obviously with the pedigree teases and whatnot in the match and the infamous throw moments, sure. I guess it would be cool if you guys have had a chat yet. I think he did, um, we did speak, and I think Triple H did it in such a Triple H fashion. Everybody had come on the bus to say hello, to talk a little bit about what may happen, the very last one uh, was, was Triple H. And, ooh, <sighs> uh, my, uh, my assistant, uh, my former assistant from, uh, from AEW was, you know, he came as a, as a friend. He was on it, and he knows the world's worst kept secret that Hunter is my favorite wrestler. And that was a really, geez, this has been a wild tear-filled weekend, but uh, it was just a good moment. Also, just to see him healthy, um, and I know, you know, retirement came uh, as it did, but to, to do some justice, uh, to not only see my favorite wrestler and somebody that, gosh, I just, I got, wanted to model so many things after and such, but Seth being uh, his protege, uh, and to be able to, to give some of those fan service, uh, perhaps, moments uh, for the fans, but also for Triple H. It was all wrestlers. We're, we're all marks and fans, and even at the highest level, which uh, he's been. But that was really touching. Especially, you got to put it in perspective. As many of you know, uh, I talked a lot of smack. I destroyed his throne. I mean, I I, I was very loud and uh, vociferous and, and just very intense on getting uh, angry. I was just angry. Uh, and that was a moment of no anger. Because uh, well, why would I be angry? You guys are... Paying me this absurd amount of money, and I get to be me. I get to be me, uh, and uh, and especially coming from where I had left here, there's nothing to be angry about. It's more a matter of one, you know, chapter ended, a beautiful chapter at AEW, which I'm so proud of, and then to start this new chapter here. I just kept saying out there, I kept saying finish, and I wasn't talking about the match. I just kept saying finish as far as. What's next? You know, I, I, what I started here, I got to finish that, if that makes any sense. But yeah, we spoke uh, right before. I'm very, uh, very excited to see him. Awesome. Thank yeah. you. Hey, Cody. Connor Casey. Hey. Good of course. You. Is that Denise behind this light? Yeah. Hi. That light, that light really going? blocking you. Good, 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 good. The usual suspects. But um, yeah. you, you mentioned in previous interviews that you intended on retiring by 40. And you've mentioned that this is a multi-year contract. Mm-hmm. Is this your last contract with wrestling? And do you still plan on retiring at that age? Does this matter if I'm holding this mic? No. Okay. Okay. Uh, 40 is this, it was for me, as far as, and I, I don't know if we ever explained why 40. 40 was because uh, I didn't want to be an old man wrestler. And some guys like being old men wrestlers and old women wrestlers. They love it. It's nothing, some of them are doing it at the highest level. You don't know they're old. Uh, but this is something people forget about me. I started in the WWE system at 1920, and I was on the road full time. Never one weekend off except when I tore my trap, and that was three weeks. That's where the mustache came from. 
So that was the only time I ever had off in the 10 years I was with WWE. That's all live events. That's not, no knock on independent wrestling. Independent wrestling, a ring of honor, maybe two shows a month, maybe one big loop. It was for me Friday, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday often. And the kicker was I was a bad guy. So it's a lot of falling down. It's a lot, of, it's a, a lot on your body, and I just didn't want to have the saddle walk. I didn't want to um, not be able to pick up my kid. But there's the best medical team here where I just was, and everyone does everything. Uh, I mean, Tom Brady's with like 80. <laughs> he's, he's, still the, he's still the GOAT. He's really just, I got to, he's the GOAT, you know, so maybe 40 isn't the number anymore, but I think that's probably uh, still kind of out there for me, just because that'd be really fun. Um, you know, I, I loved watching my dad wrestle uh, when he was older, but also it's hard, you know, and, and people forget that my, it's like a 36-year-old going on 50 is more what it feels like, just because of the schedule I had. So I don't know. I think I'm going to get away from absolutes because I was the king of absolutes for the last six years and a lot of them coming back to bite me in the ass. So, uh, which is fine. That's a good, we, we change our minds. We change stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I think maybe, maybe 40. Yeah. I don't know. Am I picking? Hi, Cody. Hey. James from Gorilla Position. Yeah. Um, welcome back. Thank you. Um, you've legitimately changed the industry. You've given a, another place to Thank work you. for hundreds of young people that now have a place to work, be well paid. <coughs> Is there anything that you want to come into WWE and try and change? Because there's a lot of talk about underutilized talents, creative not being the greatest all the time. Is there anything you want to bring to the table and, and change over here? If I could think of one thing, and I really appreciate you saying that about um, the industry, because it sucks when you're a, a wrestler or you're an entertainer and you have to pat yourself on the back. Say, oh, we did this. But, but truly, um, everything changed about sports entertainment, pro wrestling, whatever you want to call it. Everything changed with uh, what me, Matt, Nick, Kenny, and Tony did. And uh, there are people eating and families who are being... It's, that's the great, that's, I could have ridden off on that. That's why I felt so good leaving. That's why it made all the sense in the world. Like, we did all this. The kids are good. Now I, I want to go do something for, for me. Um, I totally forgot your question in my pontification. Just about making change over here. Oh, it's, it's simple. It's one thing. I think, if anything, I want to present myself without fear. Because when I was here, I was, I was a kid. I was scared. I mean, look around. There's 50 people monitoring this interview. There's... There's the chairman himself. There's guys like Hunter. There's, uh, there's Stephanie. There's just these, these dynamic figures. There's a Nick Khan. It's just like these presents. And when you're a kid, that's scary. Even though you talk, you know, you talk in the rental cars and all, all that. That's just, I was a kid. And to be able to come here and have, having known what works for me and, and keeping the disruptive things that I do. Because um, no matter what, yeah, this was my place for so long, but I'm an outsider in this moment. I don't, I don't know, I know many people. Um, I was blown away that Michael Hayes was in Gorilla. Um, that was exciting. But yeah, to, to work without fear, to compete without fear, because here's what happens. If you do something that's off color or, or not what your producer or the boss wanted, well, then you come back and they yell at you. That's, what's the worst that can happen? Because the alternative is you go out there and you blow it because you were trying to play it safe, which happened to me so much in the first 10 years, so much, you blow it. I would rather live and die by what I do. Uh, and I had told everyone who helped court me into this, I said, I have to, I have to do, do me. Uh, I'm not gonna be rude to anybody, but I can't wait till the first writer comes up to me. I can't wait. <laughs> like, I'm not gonna be rude, but man, I'll probably just lie to your face. It sounds great. <laughs> because I, I got, like, and I mean, no disrespect, that, but this, there's nothing, su su suspension of disbelief in wrestling, there's nothing fake about what I do. That's one of the hardest things about being me, is uh, the heat stays on, really. It's not, there's no gimmick. American Nightmare is a name, but it's just me. Uh, and uh, I, gotta, I gotta do me, and that doesn't mean not listening to these individuals who know and have the knowledge, because um, all the books, if you want to, get over in wrestling are usually just 
here, right? You want to, there's somebody you wouldn't even expect who's been around for 15 years who could give it to you. Um, but yeah, just to, to work and compete without fear. Because the worst that can happen is you say, I'm sorry, won't happen again. But you gotta, you gotta go out there because if you don't, if your segment doesn't work, nobody backstage gets credited for how that didn't work. It's you who sucks. Uh, and uh, I learned that the hard way. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Cody, walk us through what it was like seeing Vince again and how that communication all went down. I can say that um, we had a, a meeting in Atlanta and I didn't expect the meeting to, no, I didn't expect it to go bad, but I thought, oh, I'll be presented with something that is not for me. But I'll be able to say, thank you so much. And I'll be able to get closure on the first chapter. Because the first chapter ended real poorly. Um, hey, I'll see you next week. No, you won't. And hey, here's my post on how I'm, I'm gone, guys. No one's keeping me down like this. So I never got closure on that. Uh, I never got it with Hunter. I never got it with uh, Vince. I never got it. And that conversation was just sparkling, and it was really, 95% of that conversation was about my daughter. Um, so that was just special. I remember telling him afterwards, um, thank you, and if we never talk again, like, I feel so good, because I, there's a lot of equity and history uh, with my family, and I, I've, you know, I'm the... I don't know how to put it. I'm the meanest of all of the Rhodes guys. Uh, I'm just a, like an angry little kid still sometimes. And Dustin and Dusty was so dynamic. But Dusty worked for Vince Sr. And had nothing but glowing things. And then uh, him and, and Vince had a wonderful experience going against each other, competing against each other. But also uh, the polka dot run for what people don't remember about it was a huge money-making run for the family. Um, and then a little just personal tidbit, and forgive me if I get emotional on this, uh, not many people know this, but when I was, uh, I think I was 17, maybe 17, 18, something like that, uh, we were broke. Uh, my dad uh, started Turnbuckle Championship Wrestling, and man, he's, uh, he's like, just here's $3 million, just throw it in a hole and forget where the hole is, uh, and uh, it was so much money, and he didn't want us to know we were broke, you know, um, because he made, he found ways, you know, and a lot of that was through independent wrestling. Those people who have covered my journey know there's some promoters I consistently hit, hit up because I owed them. Um, and they didn't know me. And, uh, yeah, one time our power went out and he was, me and my sister were too proud of him to know, Hey, he didn't pay the bill and we didn't say anything. But, uh, in 2015 WWE, uh, I think it was 2000, no, 2005, I'm sorry. 2015 is when I left 2005 when he went back to WWE, I remember they put his picture on WWE.com, and he went, and he was, a, he was a writer for SmackDown, he was working with Stephanie, and he was having a great time, and he did that DVD, and uh, he uh, got the residual check for that DVD, and uh, my mom hit her knees and thanked God, um, uh, because it, it kind of saved our family, so... You know, I, uh, that's tons of equity. I can break every throne. Uh, I can make fun of some of the fun things there are that we all make fun of as wrestling fans. Uh, but you're still that kid. Um, I wanted him to know that, and uh, I got to tell him that. So, yeah, and then the fun part was the pitch was really good. Uh, it was really good, and I thought, oh, I thought, it was, I thought he was going to tell me something terrible, and this was really good and it was kind of everything I needed to hear and it became the easiest decision I've ever made because it wasn't about money it's, everybody pays really well in wrestling now thankfully it was, it was about unfinished business so, yeah. thank you when did the desire on your part to return start to creep back into your head maybe around the Royal Rumble um, because I didn't think I'd get another shot at it in terms of I was, a really, I was really proud of the run I had with WWE but uh, at AEW I was the executive vice president I was the head of the community outreach department and uh, 
I had a lot of, I call them kids, and then, I don't know, some may be older than me, but I had a lot of people who were in my kind of direct purview. Um, so I didn't have time to think about it. Uh, we, we had a show. We had a, a business to run. Um, and I wanted to make sure, uh, I'm so glad I got one with Sammy on the way, way out. Uh, so it just was moving so fast. And then I have all these other fun projects that I love doing, like, you know, Go Big Show. And uh, Roads to the Top was actually sincerely very fun. I'm working on a, a pilot now about uh, vintage uh, spirits and bourbons in the U.S. that I'm really excited about. Um, so everything was moving so fast. So I was just, as soon as the baby was born, it, in, the literal second thing I thought, other than she's so beautiful, is uh, I have to make a lot of money. Because uh, now, like, I've, I, just, I have this baby. Like, what do I do? Um, so I just, I was busy, 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 busy. And um, I think around the Royal Rumble, because what happens with the Royal Rumble is, uh, this is going to sound super marky, and that's fine. I have really good rumble stats. <laughs> like, so they're, 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 they're in the top ten of the rumblers, and I'm like one of the only two in that top ten to not win it. And I remember thinking, like, that's going to go away. These guys, because, you know, Ziggler's still at These guys are still in there, and they're, they're kidding the time, getting the time. And I'm just thinking, oh, it would be really good to go back and uh, go back in a vindicated type way to be me and, uh, you know, try to be the absolute best wrestler in the world and, pr- and prove it um, here. So I'd, I'd say about the, uh, the Royal Rumble, because also around that time sort of creeping into my mind, as much as I loved where I was, and I loved my job, it's no one's dream to be an executive. It's pretty cool for a minute, and then you get blamed for everything, and, you know, which, that's part of it, you know, it's, it's, it's not your dream. You, everyone wants to be a wrestler. The dream is they're putting the belt on in their underwear. That's the dream. And I locked myself out of that because I didn't want to upset fans and, and do that. And they still got pissed. So I'm thinking, oh, well, <laughs> fuck. You know, like, sorry. I, I locked myself out of the main title picture. Um, yeah, so around that, I, I had told myself I didn't want to be a gatekeeper wrestler. I didn't just want to be, oh, new debut, Cody program, new debut, Cody program. Uh, I, I didn't want to be that. So that around that time, I started thinking, what would it be? It would be different. It would probably be what's best for the whole business to do this. Uh, and maybe it was, maybe it was. I think it's best for everything uh, to do this and free up some of the real estate. I mean, they hired like 15 guys with what was available at the time, so that's good. Uh, yeah, I'd say about the Royal Rumble. I'm so used to picking we'll, we'll up. Mike. You put the mic down. Okay. Mike. Everyone's in stereo. Hey. 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 No shit. What's up? Man? <laughs> so, um, the last couple of months, how surreal and weird has this entire process been for you? Especially since Twitter and all the other social media things had all the conspiracy theories. What's it like being in the middle of that maelstrom? And you know what the deal is, but there's so many theories and so many riddles and yeah. none of it is created by you, it's all outside forces. What's it like sitting in the middle of that watching it all happen and how surreal the last couple of months been leading up to last night? I, I chose, uh, and I think you, you know this, I chose to keep quiet on, on the departure. That was part of it, but also my own work. And, and Tony did as well. That was just because we have that res- respect for each other. But in the process of being quiet wrestling fans don't like quiet and they had every theory and some of it this was what and I think we even spoke about this this was really what got me and it was hard to see was the theories were about money and creative control and they were almost printed as if they were facts and man it wasn't a shred of truth like that's why I kept telling everybody I remember Meltzer reached out and he wasn't really reaching out for a scoop but I just told him flat out it was time no it was time and and maybe a little you know, damn it, on my end, like, I wish we had done this, or maybe on their end, but um, being silent, uh, I feel so bad for my agent, who's standing somewhere in the room, um, because it was hard. Uh, I I didn't want to be defamed, Um, but also you have to accept what really did happen. You did make the, you did make the jump, so you do have to own that, so you did make the jump, you did leave, but how did you leave? So over time, you know, I've, I've, told everybody there's not going to be a shoot interview from my end there's not going to be this there is no nefarious tale there wasn't a scandal uh, it wasn't something with brandy it wasn't anything like that it was just time and that has been something that 
is hard, uh, I think, for fans to accept. And it was sa- it w- it's sad because you'll, you'll find a lot of wrestlers, I'm sure you've experienced this, who are like, oh, Twitter doesn't matter. Does it? <laughs> they're people. Like, oh, they're bots, they're trolls. Really? This looks like a person. And you, you lost their money. Um, you lost their friendship. You lost their fandom. That matters. In the industry of touching people, that matters. So the best I could do was the language of physical pro wrestling, the language of it, I thought maybe they'll figure it out and see it when I come out and feel like this isn't about leaving. It's about returning. And it wasn't about them. And I, when I say them, it wasn't about AEW. And it really wasn't about WWE. It was about me. Uh, and what, what I needed to do next as a professional. And it led to WWE and to be back in front of this fandom on the biggest stage. Um, but it was tough. It was really tough. And I'm sure you've met a lot of wrestlers, oh, they're n- they're no problem with social media, none, right? And then they're the ones who have the, the nuclear meltdown and you watch it. And I, I was part of helping people, part of the you know, media team on helping people with social, and I was having meltdowns. Uh, so yeah, I just, I just, uh, I, I had to sit and take it. Uh, we did we talk about Wharf? No. Okay, so measure is a measure of a man. No, it's not measure of a man. Sins of the fathers. Sins of the father is the next generation episode for Star Trek. If you're not in the next generation, please watch it. It's just a great ethics show. It ain't nothing about space. Uh, they're just <laughs> in space. Uh, but sins of the father, Wharf accepts this dishonor to keep the whole thing whole. He accepts it. And man, I just felt like I'm having to sit here and just get shredded and ridiculed and they'll never know. It wasn't a big deal. It was just time. Um, See, I felt like Worf uh, for 40 something days. But then last night I felt, oh, I feel good. They get it. And then um, I jabbed Seth and there was kind of a discussion. I wonder if they'll get it. And the jab more than the elbow. Uh, they got it, and uh, that was a re- that was a really really good feeling. So I'm glad I did stay quiet, and it was a you know lesson in patience. Thank you. Hey Cody. Hey, hey bro. Ricardo Vaquero from Medio Tiempo from Mexico. Um, it was a huge deal. You went trending topic in Mexico. Oh yeah. You were trending topic over there. But I want to talk about the pop you got, the reaction from the people of sure. WrestleMania. You got a stone cold level pop yesterday. Yeah. <laughs> How big of a deal was it for you? And of course, what did that what does that tell you about the decision you took six years ago to leave WWE and to be welcomed back in that manner? Well, I think maybe just a lesson in don't don't uh, let your place on the card really define you. Um, There's a lot of guys who hit you with the pin me, pay me. They're just, it's a job. This, I don't know how much of a job. This is, this is is what I do. Uh, That's really the only thing I, the only skill I have. Um, So, I've heard different promoters say, oh, after two weeks they forget. They don't, after, they, they, they don't remember what we did a month ago. Let's catch them up. We didn't need to catch anybody up. They knew right when they heard wrestling is more than one royal family. They got it. And they knew what it, that this is what I was just telling Mike. Like, the language of what we do is very clear in terms of, oh, this is a, hopefully, I don't want to pat myself on the back, but a triumphant return. This is nothing different, you know. Um, but uh, I'm still kind of covering it in terms of, I put my phone down um, after the match, and I looked at it. I'm not close uh, to catching up, but then also socially uh, to see all that love. You got to take that and love it because you're going to have days where I, I remember I cut this uh, really bad promo on uh, Anthony Gogo, which I thought was great. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I thought I thought it was great because I was talking about my kid and my like I did. I was sincere in it, but it was just ill timed and tone deaf. And uh, I looked at my phone and just thought, oh my god, like they're treating me like I murdered somebody, like I robbed a bank or something. The guys a <laughs> And promo, like yeah, I, I sometimes I'm I'll hit it out of the park or it's a strikeout. There's nothing in between, um, and for uh, you know f- to to be able to kind of 
you get the phone and oh it's just gleaming and happy and to you always want to get all the old timers with your match you know your your, your flares your hogans your austins i don't want to say old timers but your legends your takers you're just the legends you want to get that text uh and to be able to just see that some of the names yes you know it's just that little silent fist pump got it you know uh so that was uh, special. I, you said Stone Cold Pop. I got a great Stone Cold story. I don't know if you guys remember the New Japan uh, Long Beach show. I wrestled Okada. It was really fun. And uh, I was just a really tremendous uh, storyteller. So Okada is. And uh, I was excited. I went to, I always like try to get some space afterwards, uh, which is not possible here, by the way. My God. <laughs> this is insane. It was fun, though. Um, but I went out to the parking lot, and he had come to watch that show and sit on the truck with one of his friends who was producing the show. And I didn't know that. Somebody, there was whispers that Steve Austin was there. And he started walking across the parking lot. I mean, it's Steve Austin. Not like Steve Austin. It's the same guy walking in the ring last night. And he came up to me in the parking lot, and he was telling me uh, just about some holds that I could do differently. And, but he was giving me really sincere, genuine advice from, you know, wrestling's most prolific Money maker was just you had to stop yourself from like oh stop being a fan and listen to what he's saying listen and so I'm listening and then all this press and media is slowly coming in, slowly coming slowly coming it's literally looking like they're moving up and right as they got a little closer he just patted me on the shoulder he turned around and he walked off into the darkness <laughs> <laughs> like there was no car there was no car there was no hotel there was no thing and it was like Batman it, sh- it was legit like Batman because there were people like where'd he go and he was gone so I don't know if he like turned the corner and sprinted <laughs> uh, but yeah it's just a really special thing and we got to have that moment again last night uh, and, uh, it was special because he, he said that was the match that you needed to have and uh <sighs> Hearing that from the guy who's going on last, yup, thank you so, so much. And uh, a lot of equity with my family and him as well. So, yeah, thank you. It was, it was good. I'm glad people enjoyed it. That's really, we're supposed to have fun. Some, it's just supposed to be fun. Two Graham and Ben. Yeah. Uh, Graham and Bleacher Report. So you mentioned a couple of months ago. Holy smokes. Bleacher Report, huh? <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. Were you ever on any of the conference calls? No, that was always uh, Chris Neal. I, those, those guys are as sweet as can be, but they're some <coughs> funny moments. Oh, oh man. I'm sorry, I got no, it. No, no worries. Got it. Oh, man. Uh, you mentioned one of your final promos on AEW Dynamite a couple of months ago. Yeah. That this was that reportedly, you changed the timeline here from Raw. You were free at this point. You were going to do something that no one has ever done before. Mm-hmm. This is about the beginning of 2020. You're going to do something unprecedented. Obviously, we're seeing that now. Uh, worth noting, as we all know in this room, that you're one of the first people to jump ship, the first major star, one of the first only people to jump ship from the WWE. You talked earlier about how this is about, you know, this is a journey for you. Um, do you feel that pressure of knowing that if this goes well, obviously it's uh. the aftermath, this could open the doors for other people to switch sides? Because in the last three years, it's only been kind of a one-way thing. Yeah. Everyone talks about the forbidden door, and I mentioned that in that interview. Uh, the Forbidden Door isn't just the dream match that you throw together. The forbidden Door is literally having the balls to make a hard decision, make those moves, and, and go back and forth. But the Forbidden Door, you know, it's not locked. Um, I know there's, I've seen that, I've seen that in writing, that, oh, how this goes will, will maybe impress upon others if they want to make the, the move, if they want to switch. One goes here, one goes there. That couldn't be, that's the best thing ever. It's healthy, right? You guys are all here covering wrestling. Is everyone here a wrestling fan? Or sports entertainment? Right? <laughs> yeah, you know, like, the, whatever, you're covering, the, you're covering this. Uh, isn't it nice that you can go to all these different places? And isn't that nice? Doesn't that feel good? And, and, and it's not, a, the, the world is not so small that you don't know. Um, you, you, I know that person. We were talking about Okada, for example. If he was to walk out, I know that guy. I know that you know those individuals, and uh, maybe there will be some some back and forth, and maybe some folks uh, uh, will will come by. But I'm I'm just happy that the business is healthy and that uh, that I was ha- I was you know uh, part of that. But now, as healthy as it is, um, Steve Austin will also tell you how healthy it was. Um, at one point, and I think that's the responsibility. 
is, and I think that's why I, I never want to begrudge somebody who goes and does a movie or does a pilot or does something because they're they're yeah they're doing it for something for themselves as well. But that don't that doesn't hurt what we do. It brings more people to the table. Um, that's what you want. That's old school promoter. Hey, you went to the show last week. He had a great time. He told two of his buddies. There's three people who came. That's it's still the same style of promotion in wrestling. Get as many people to come. Uh, and if they find someone they love, then they follow their journey. So that's the real responsibility as far as last night was great, but it was a freebie. It really was. It, um, I'm, I'm very glad that I, I think the match was strong, but it was a freebie. And the responsibility really is on to what do we do next? Because this is crazy in terms of the legacy that's been laid out and what's happened in the now what? Um, it needs to be just as big. And uh, that's that's definitely a, a tall order, but I look I look forward to that. And, you know, you you want to play in the Super Bowl, you want to win the big games and win the big one. Um, so yeah, it's good responsibility. It's good pressure. And thank you, by the way, Bleacher Report. Thank you guys because we're very good to me at AEW. Thank you. I'm sorry if we yelled at you. On... <laughs> very good. Thank you guys. Hi, uh, Lisa from Sport Bible. Hello. Uh, a lot has changed since you left the WWE. A lot of new talent has come through. Yeah, Baron Corbin was mad, sad, happy. <laughs> <laughs> he went through a lot of stuff. Yeah. Um, anyone that you kept an eye on while you were away, and now that you're back, you're keen to wrestle with? Well, I kept an eye on everybody. Because um, you got to remember, we, we came up, like, there's guys that I came up with. Um, like Miz, I was so proud of him last night because I was on a bus with a group of people kind of poking fun at Miz. Oh, he can't. I hate when people say he can't work. Well, what is working? Because if working is getting this crowd going nuts and then giving them a surprise at the end, he definitely can. Um, and at the highest level, I was so proud of him uh, to see Kofi and all his kids. Uh, just, honestly, um, uh, to see to see Beth and to be able to share photos of our, our children, um, ah, just uh, I really I tried to keep in touch with everybody. Um, I did, um, I did. So it didn't feel like I had been away. Uh, it was really jarring when I walked into Gorilla because I never went through Gorilla to go out. I went to the little Cody Vader thing, so I never saw anyone. So then I went to Gorilla and it was just, oh my gosh, I I already know all these people. Um, and uh, you're wearing that Brody shirt. It's a great example. Uh, everybody in the business came together over, um, you know, what happened with Brody. Um, so this was a good time to see some people. Um, but yeah, no, I, I kept in touch with everybody. The one that I was a little shocked, I was told that Randy is like a family man now and doesn't get in trouble. And I, I won't have it. <laughs> because the very first time I met Randy, that, the very first time I saw Randy, we were in Cape Town, South Africa, at the, t- the uh, TV hotel, or whatever, for that tour, a really nice hotel. And I walked by the men's bathroom, and he had his hands around the urinal, and he goes, hey, Code, look at this. And he yanked the entire urinal out of the wall. The entire, like the superhuman strength, plaster ripping off the thing, flood just sweeping out in the lobby, and he giggled. <laughs> and I thought, I don't, I don't know if I, I don't know if I got what it takes to, to be a wrestler. I don't, I, I don't know. I had this big talent meeting the next day. Hey, there were security cameras, guys. We want to know who did it. He walked up in front of everybody, said, "Hey, I want to know who did it." And it, <laughs> like, this is amazing. This guy is nuts. Uh, and then to see him just. He's got this family, and he's a leader, and a because he was a great teacher, he really was. I told him last night I got a brief interaction with him. I said, "Just thank you for teaching me," because uh, he took the time to teach me. But that one shocks me, so I'm going to try and set some like traps, <laughs> some things to see if I can get him back, because that was important. Like Randy freaking out was a big part of my life. You know, ice cream. He had to have ice cream. If he didn't have ice cream, he'd tell him, "I'm going to go in the kitchen to make my own ice cream." It was just. I need him that there, and I don't think I'm going to get him there, but I'm going to try. I'm going to try and stir him up as much as possible. I think I'm going to start today and tell him such and <laughs> such, and such said this about you. I think I'm just going to see what I can do. But I was shocked that he's. I'm I'm very happy that he's the man he's become, and to be able to lead people because he was so good to me. He it was never in public, but 
on the, on the side. He told me everything I needed to know to be successful as a wrestler, and he did it in front of me as well. He showed, so uh, I was so happy uh, to see him. I really can't wait to get back in the ring with him. I'd probably hold off on it for a hair, but I can't wait to, to do that. Joey? Cody, first of all, thanks for doing this. Oh, uh, thank Joey you. Joey Hayden, Dallas Morning News. I know yeah. we all appreciate you taking the time. Uh, rest- How bad is my forehead, by the way? It's all right. Homie went to town with the Kawada kicks. <laughs> Homie went to town. I, and then after, I didn't know what it was. And my wife was just like, what happened to your face? <laughs> <laughs> Not here, here. <laughs> Go ahead, sir. But uh, WrestleMania 32, as Stardust, you pull out a polka dot ladder. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. WrestleMania 38, last night, you run through the litany of Rhodes family maneuvers. Yeah. In the same building six years later, what kind of extra significance to you over time to be back here in the same spot for this moment? Well, uh, one of the things in the, you're from Dallas Morning News. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I I lived briefly in Din County and in, in Von Erich country, and as a kid, we lived in McKinney. Uh, I love Dallas. Um, I don't want to give you a short answer, but uh, I'll say I'm really looking forward to telling fans. Uh, on Raw, hopefully, and you know it's the Raw after WrestleMania, so who knows what's going to happen? It's kind of like the mystery vortex of, of of WWE. But I'm really looking forward to telling them my intentions. But I think if you're a hard, not a hardcore fan, I think if you're a wrestling fan, a sports entertainment fan, I think if you're a fan, you get it in terms of what I want to do. Uh, and I I had said uh, in the interview they got me uh, for uh, WWE. Dot com or the interview they got me right afterwards, I had kind of opened the bag in terms of, for so long I tried so hard to just veer away from Dusty. Just because he was, he was Dusty. Like, you know, like, I don't want them chanting his name. He's already over. You know, like, I, he's, he was the best. Uh, and just a superb performer. And the industry's been so good to him after his passing in terms of nobody rewriting history on what he actually did. Um, but... I think for the first time, yeah, there's that great quote, you know, you, a man often finds his destiny on the path he takes to avoid it. That's, that's me. It, it really is, you know. Um, so it'll, uh, it'll be unique to just kind of put that out there. Because there's a story that I hopefully get to tell fans that I've never told fans about why. Why I wanted to be a wrestler. Some people in this room might know it. Uh, why I want to be a wrestler. But I've never told the whole, uh, you know, wrestling fans, sports entertainment fans, the WWE Universe. I've never told them. Uh, and I get the chance to do that. But I feel like I may not need to because I think if they see it, the jabs, the elbow, they'll get it. Um, but it's special. And uh, t- uh, Texas, is, Texas is a Texas crowd. And Texas crowds are different. San Antonio is hot. Uh, Laredo is, is on fire. Hidalgo is on fire. Uh, Houston uh, is a little bit more of you got to earn it. You got to earn it. Dallas is a lot of you got to earn it too. They've seen the Monarchs. They've seen uh, Undertaker, Steve Austin, Booker T. They've seen it, and I loved that. I loved that. I felt like Barry Windham out there because it was a matter of okay, okay, it's going good, it's going good. I think it's good. I think it's good. Oh, and this, you know, as the sound goes up in those stadiums, but then to be able to slowly, slowly, I was, ah, felt like a pro. Yeah. Okay, we're gonna do two more: one domestic, one international. So Damn. Sure. Okay. Hi, buddy. Joe from Miss Boston. There's so many people from the UK here. We're that's out, amazing. We're out now. That's so, yeah, that's so great. Yeah. Um, so you touched on it a little bit, but how would you describe that the return last night when you saw your own way to come up through the stage? Like, what was going through your mind then when you got the reaction from the crowd when you were out there? And then when getting back to stage, you glad for the match? Uh, I feel like uh, I'm a, I try to be like a, mm, sorry for saying like, I try to be a master of faces. I think about what will I do? Will I smile? Uh, touch my you know, tongue to my teeth? Will I smirk? Will I sneer? Will I drop my... I try to do... I think a lot about cameras. And I want to do this, I want to do that. I had nothing. I, I honestly... And I, I got in the ring and I had nothing. Because it was just real. I didn't need to indicate um, how I felt. It was, it was just sincere. So I, I didn't know what the feeling would be other than I had told so many of these guys kind of flanking me. It's so heavy. It's so heavy. And this happened so quick. It's been 40-something days. 40-something days ago, I was wrestling Sammy Guevara on a different show and having a, a great time and a very fun, great ladder match. And now, bam, whole world's kind of changed again, at least for me personally. So 
that was a good indication of uh, how sincere everything was because I just didn't have I, I had to just really feel it and take it in I've not watched it back but I I know there's a couple moments I'm thinking like just stone faced like just because it was so so good to feel it but uh, definitely nothing but positive uh, there wasn't anything I kicked myself over in there there wasn't a feeling uh, that uh that it irked me. I wanted to jump into the crowd, uh, but I know the rules are different and such. And then I thought, oh, I could still do it. Maybe I'll do it. And then it was just we were moving along, moving along. But I hope that I can do that at some point here soon, just because it's so good to to see the fans and see them like that. It was supposed to make them have a good time. They're here for more than two days, really. Uh, it's got to be the best experience of their life. Um, every wrestling show should be that, or tend to be that. But, uh, yeah, that, the big indicator that I was in a whole other place was the none of my faces. I don't think one of them happened. I was just, wow, like, floored by it all. I, everyone told me, oh, they're going to love it. It's going to be huge. You don't know that. And plus, I had come off a situation where I was split. The crowd was split on me. So I was prepared for that, which would have been great. I love the split. Love it. Welcome the split. But... That wasn't a split, and I thought, thank you. And it was a good and the feather in Seth's cap for making it that way for me. Right. Nick, still, you see Nick, he stuck his hand way up. Then we'll do two more. Look how high he's doing. <laughs> <laughs> but I already picked Rick first. Got it. Right. Uh, Ricky Chino, SB Nation. Nice to finally meet you in person. Yeah, nice thank to meet you. For you. Doing this. Uh, want to talk about your opponent last night. A lot of people said that he would have been the, you know, perfect opponent for you at Wrestlemania this is a guy you may mention in an interview before that you were his first dark match yeah to watch Seth Rollins grow from there to where he is last night you know what do you think about his evolution and also the work that he did in this build up to this match by himself when he was um, cooking and smoking in San Jose when he worked uh, he wrestled Randy great match then he went out and cashed in I was, uh, as wrestlers, you're, you're happy for each other, but also, hmm, it's the spot you wanted. Yeah. And some people get it sooner than later, and he was part of this crop of guys and girls that were Dusty's kids from NXT. Whew. I hated all of Dusty's kids. Um, and I didn't, you know, like, that was unfair. It was just jealousy. It was just a little bit of, like, bitterness in, in the soul, and what better revenge on earth is there than success? And, he, you know, he absolutely moved way ahead of me, way up the card, but to be able to share this. Uh, and you mentioned one of the hardest things to do in pro wrestling and sports entertainment is get to the show. That's to get to the show and keep people's imagination. That's what I, how I define a pro wrestler, your ability to capture their imagination from show to show. That's what a pro wrestler is to me. And he did such, he did such a marvelous job to get there and then uh, to be able to take him you know, by surprise within the confines of the show itself. Uh, I feel like it couldn't have been anybody else. I really, I feel like, I, like Kalamazoo, Michigan, he walked out, introduced himself to the crowd, intercontinental title, whatever it may be. Dayton, uh, Ohio, I'll never forget, he had come off of Ring of Honor. And I wasn't being a dick or anything, but I asked him, I said, do you think they're going to announce you from Dayton? Because we do that for the dark matches, you know, from Dayton, Ohio, Tyler Black. And he goes, ah, uh, probably not. They'll know me, though. <laughs> <laughs> and then they did. They, it wasn't overwhelming, but as I was dashing Cody Rhodes at the time, so it wasn't overwhelming for me either in terms of receptions, but they did. There was a contingent of the, you know, the, the ROH fandom. Um, so he always had that confidence, and he always had that business acumen, and, and we're both fathers now, and uh, just to see the level he's grown, he was ready long before others. That's a skill in itself. Some of us are slow learners, me being the, the number one example, uh, but it really couldn't have been anybody but him. Really couldn't it be anybody but him. I really look forward to... Uh, I don't think that would be the only one. I don't. Uh, uh, but who knows? Okay. Uh, very enthusiastic. Damn, sorry. Sweet. <laughs> Appreciate right. this, Cody. Yeah. 
except for you having a lot of people boo me at Starcast. What had happened? You told everyone to boo me at Starcast number one. Well, that's that's because that's how they love you. Oh, I if they boo you, they love you. If oh. they cheer for you, they love you. Wow. If they don't really do anything, then they don't care. Wow. We love you, buddy. Um, oh, thanks, man. So my question is a little off the beaten path. Um, you brought Eddie Kingston, Ricky Starks, to AEW. You yeah. obviously have an eye for young talent. What's the future of the Nightmare Factory? And do you oh. have interest in following the footsteps of your dad down with NXT, WWE Developmental? Do you, have, do you want to work on that side of the business with WWE? Never say never. Just general, because in six years of having this conversation again, and I've completely gone back on what I said. I don't think I want a management job in wrestling ever again. Um, I don't think I was mature enough for it. And I, and I tried. Um, and Eddie and, uh, and uh, Ricky, you mentioned them both. All I did was put them out there. Seth did the same thing for me last night. He put me out there. Uh, he, he put me out there. Tony Khan was the one who said, yes. Because I had said, we don't have to hire everybody from the open challenge. And we basically did. Um, at the time, um, the Nightmare Factory has never been connected with anybody, anywhere. Anywhere. So I want them all. The, I, we don't, a lot of them think it's a fast track to a wrestling company. And what I try to tell them, and I understand why, it's people have gotten called up. But I try to tell them it's a fast track to just learning how to make money in sports entertainment and pro wrestling. You, uh, the first thing I do at the end is I, I say, hey, don't be afraid to ask. If you want to talk to a Mike Lombardi at NEW or if you want to go to Chaotic or all pro wrestling, tell them you, tra- you trained here. That's the whole point. I don't, if you don't make it, then to the end of the 12 weeks, then we don't have to worry about it. But all of them who make it, I, that's a hard thing for me is I, I love all these kids, and we're on, like, Camp 5. It's just too many at this point. You know, I remember my first student, and that being Brooke Havoc, and now, like, every camp there's somebody like that. Um, but, yeah, no, I just I wanted to feed the wrestling and sports entertainment space, uh, and I want them to go and make the right decisions. And we have great – we have trainers there from one company. We have trainers there from another company. It's all – harmony, synergy, we watch everything. I don't like to be in a bubble, right? I know how big WrestleMania was, and it would be very easy to be in this bubble because I could live in it forever in terms of the scope and grandeur of what Kevin Dunn directed last night in terms of just this beautiful presentation. But I, we know it's, all, it's happening all over. That's why it worked last night. I wasn't just in a cave for six years. Um, so that's, that's why it worked. So the factory will continue to operate and run. If I never walk into the performance center, I'd be happy because it's just, it's a little too hard for me. You know, that's, uh, that's where his office was. His boots are there. It's just a little too hard for me. And also, when I graduated OVW, my dad told me, never go back. <laughs> never, you, you're done. You're done. Never go back. Because you, you can learn wrestling moves all day long at a wrestling school. No knocking on that. You can learn flips, dives. All, you can learn all these moves that are needed today. The high-tech stuff, as Arn Anderson likes to call it. The high-tech stuff. <laughs> uh, but the only way you really get the flow and the connection is, is working, in front of, and working in front of crowds. And that, you don't have that ability. You can get your students to be a crowd, but it's not really uh, the same. So, yeah, I, I mean, I, I'm game. I'm the, like as the press release stated and such, this was a very large agreement. I'm fully all in and committed to it. So where I go, you know, they'll send me where, where I go, but I, uh, I will try and steer clear of any management roles, anything like that ever. I just, I'm a wrestler, right? I'm a superstar. <laughs> uh, and I'm, and, and that's probably what's, what's best, best for me. Um, because people, people blame me for everything. No, no, no. No. no, no, no. Um, but happy to know. Okay, guys, we're going to wrap. But before we do, uh, talk about the A&E. I blew it. I didn't talk about the A&E thing, huh? Okay. Where's Gina? I'm so sorry. This is my publicist. Everybody say hi, Gina. Hi, Gina. Hi, Gina. Hi, Gina. Uh, this is great. This is very exciting. This was one of the big pieces to the puzzle in terms of coming back. Uh, A&E is doing a documentary on uh, my dad. And... Uh, I was not worried in by any minute that they wouldn't get it right, um, but uh, I know for sure they will get it right because uh, I'm the executive producer on it, and uh, it's covering a lot. I wonder if you guys will see his brother's interview and Janie Ingalls interview. You probably know Janie. Some of these historic figures that uh, surrounded uh, 
m my father. Uh, I think everyone knows. I, I have a list of names of all the people who've wronged Dusty over the years. And it's like Arya Stark of people, you know, people who said this and said this. But in this case, I'm just really happy. Let's present the real story. Let's present what he did uh, with Crockett, what he did with, uh, with WWF, what he would ultimately do with NXT. Let's present the real story because uh, he was a very authentic person in somewhat of a, a not authentic uh, world. And it was positive for him, and it was negative. But uh, I'm glad to sh uh, share the legacy with the world, and all four of the kids uh, are in it. And that's very, uh, very rare that we ever get together to do anything. So yeah, uh, very much looking forward to that. I hope it's the best of the doc series. I mean that in a fun, competitive way. I'm sure they'll all be wonderful. But I'm happy to re revisit uh, Dusty again. And and that was happening before I had decided to come back. So now there's a whole other layer. Um, I think the ending changed. Uh, to it all. There's a whole other layer to it that's really special. So very much looking forward to that. Very much. Congrats. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you, guys. Yeah, yeah.